Hi guys, I am Akash Rao and welcome to Akash Biology. In this video tutorial, we will be reading about the first part of the nerve impulse transmissions, that is the resting membrane potential. So in this lectures, we will be dealing what how the physiological process of nerve fibers is being governed by the what the laws of physics and the chemistry. So taking no more time, going on to the topic. So every part of our cells, man, every, virtually the every cells of our body, either it may be what nerve fiber or the muscle cells or the epithelial cells they contain the electrogenic pump what electrogenic pump that's why there is a electrochemical transfer electrochemical transmission of impulse throughout its surface so we have to know what is the resting membrane potential so in order to know we have to know about what our body fluid is being divided into two parts one is inside the cell another is the outside the cells so the one that is inside the cell is known as what intracellular fluid and what the part of the fluid that is outside the cell is known as what extracellular fluid what extracellular fluid so the intracellular fluid is contained with which of the ions that is the potassium and the anions and proteins so let's say this is a cell so inside the cell there is what potassium and the proteins and the anions what anions Proteins and anions are what? Negatively charged. Whereas outside of the cell, there is presence of what? Sodium and the chloride in abundance. So we might be asked in the entrance examinations, which of the following ions are more concentrated in the extracellular fluid? They are what? Sodium. That is being followed by what? Potassium. Whereas inside the cell, there is more concentration of the potassium and the proteins and the anions. Now in the membrane of any cell, what it they say this is the cell membrane this is the cell and on the surface there is a phospholipid cell membrane so in the cell membrane what happens this is the inside of the cell this is projected outside the cells so it has alpha subunit and a beta subunit so in the beta subunit inside the fibers it has three attaching domains whereas on the outside it has two attaching domains so we can assume from the outside it will pick up how many potassium two potassium ions whereas from the inside it will pick up three sodium ions now inside of this this domain it has an enzymatic property what enzymatic property that is the atpase means atpase means it will what cleavage the atp into adp plus inorganic phosphate now this inorganic phosphate will provide the concent uh, energy for the concentration gradient so this is the active principle what active transport of energy because the atp is being lysed so inorganic phosphate will give energy to this pump that's why three sodium are pumped out whereas two potassium is pumped in so three sodium are pumped out whereas two potassium is being pumped in that's why the potassium has more concentration inside the cells whereas the sodium has more concentration out the cell so after this let us assume what so this is so more of the potassium is concentrated inside <coughs> so as this potassium is more concentrated inside so this one what leaky channels for potassium what leaky channels for potassium leaky channels what leaky channels for potassium so what happens there is more potassium there is less potassium so we have known about the concentration gradient so the concentration of any ions or any of the things will always flow from high concentration to low concentration so the more potassium is inside the cells then we will try to maintain the concentration gradient that's why it will be transferred to the outside through the leaky channels what it will be transferred outside to the leaky channels but along with it it will it cannot transport the anions with it what it cannot transport anions along with it then after that as the potassium goes outside the electropositive means inside the cell which was before is changing into what electronegative why because the potassium which electropositive is being leaving leaving only the proteins and the anions what proteins and anions proteins and anions so after that what will become the outside the cell will become positive whereas the inside of the cell will become negative 
but soon after that what happens this process is being what popped up or this process is being stopped why because the inside the fiber becomes so much negative and outside the fiber becomes so much positive so your difference in the charge so there develops a potential so what is potential so potential is what the diff the potential is the means what the concentration gradient or the concentration of two anions that is the opposite anions try to what <laughs> maintain a uh, gradient in between them that's why this process is being what a stop because this is what concentration gradient concentration gradient whereas here it will develop what the electrostatic gradient what electrostatic gradient electrostatic gradient means what though there is concentration gradient but at the same time the series becoming electronegative it will try to what again uh, it will try to take off what more positive charge so this electrostatic gradient will counteract what concentration gradient so that the process of just uh, outgoing of the potassium is being stopped and this gradient or this potential is known as what Earnest potential. Earnest. Earnest potential or the diffusion potential. So what is earnest potential? Earnest potential is that potential at which the electro gradient, electrostatic gradient is being counterbalanced by the concentration gradient. Though the concentration gradient is present, but what happens? There is no there is irregularity of charge. That was this process has been disrupted by this. And that is known as earnest potentials. I hope you have understood this. Now we will take another example. So let's say this is a cell. This is a cell. So inside the cell, there is what potassium and the anions. And there is what this is the cell membrane. Outside there is no potassium. There is always a concentration gradient of leaving more potassium. So the potassium will leave out this the concentration gradient but soon the same phenomena will occur that is what the electrostatic gradient will oppose this so how much potential or the earnest potential is the potential inside the what the cell potential inside the cell that will counteract the process of diffusion so how much it is for the potassium it is minus 94 millivolt why it is millivolt because the biological process in our in our body this voltage is so much low that we have to calculate in the millivolt so minus 94 millivolt is that potential or is that earnest potential inside the cell membrane that will what counteract the concentration gradient of potassium to go to the outside so you have to remember what it is the earnest potential for potassium similarly is the case of what the sodium now we will deal about what sodium so sodium is more concentrated outside so it tends to go what to the inside but soon the same phenomena will occur so concentration gradient is again being balanced by what the electrostatic gradient and in the case of the sodium it is 61 millivolt what 61 millivolt so there must be some formula in order to calculate so it is mathematical derived what earnest potential means plus minus 61 log concentration inside by concentration outside so the sodium at potassium ATP has that is the two potassium are pumped in for the four potassium three sodium are pumped out so there is what there is a difference in the what uh, concentrations of the potassium and sodium to the outside so outside the cell the potassium has a concentration of the potassium has a concentration of let me check it has what 4 milli equivalent per liter whereas inside the cell the potassium has what the it has 140 milli equivalent per liter 
so when we have to take the plus minus signs when a so it is the what potential inside the cell membrane so when a po positive charge is being leaving then we have to take what the negative sign when a positive charge is entering inside the cell then we have to take a positive sign similarly for sodium so more sodium is concentrated what outside what outside so how um, it is 142 milli equivalent per liter whereas inside the sodium concentration is what um 14 milli equivalent per liter equivalent per liter so when we calculate separately for the potassium then it comes out to be what minus 94 what minus 94 milli uh, millivolt it is for the potassium whereas for the sodium it comes out to be plus 61 millivolt because as the positive charge is entering inside the cell that's why it is what plus whereas the positive charge is leaving in the case of potassium it is minus 94 so it is what earnest potential so earnest potential will tends to what it will calculate the any potential for a separate cell only one but inside our body we do not take separate compartment we have a single compartment in which all of the potassium is going outside the same time sodium is coming into this coming inside at the same time so for that another equation is being given that is more or less same to the earnest equations but it is known as what goldman equations what goldman i think the name is i think goldman or something like that goldman's equations so what it it gives it gives the electromotive force as 61 log but it will take into account the permeability what permeability that is concentration into permeability concentration into permeability concentration into permeability that is inside concentration into permeability concentration into permeability outside so there are mainly three ions that are mainly responsible for maintaining the resting membrane potential so it is for sodium it is for potassium and this is for the chlorine no this is for potassium sodium sodium chloride so why we mainly take what sodium and potassium because they can go rapid change whereas the chlorine channel cannot go the rapid change in the cell membrane so what is permeability means how much a cell membrane is permeable to those ions so the maximum permeability is for what the potassium potassium then it is being followed by what sodium then the, that it is for the chlorine what it is for the <coughs> no, no first of all the permeability we will come into what permeability so it is maximum for what real relative permeability that is for what the potassium then it is for the chlorine then it is for what the sodium so if it is one for the potassium then it is 0 0.45 for the chlorine whereas it is how much 0 0.04 for the sodium so this is the permeability but we do not take in, into account so much about the chlorine because the chlorine channel that is being concentrated on the cell membrane cannot undergo the rapid change now we will calculate this so it will come out to be how much for the concentration that is inside how much is the concentration inside for the potassium it is 140 permeability is 1 similarly out, outside it has the permeability of 4 into 1 plus for the inside that is the 40 into how much 0 0.04 that is 142 into 0 0.04 plus for the chloride inside the cell the concentration of chloride is 7 millivolt per liter into 0 0.45 plus it is 0 0.45 into 100 that is the concentration outside so more chlorine is concentrated outside and it's come out to by what minus 70 millivolt what minus 70 millivolt that is what the resting membrane potential 
So the resting membrane potential of a knob fiber is averages about what? Minus 70 millivolt. It is due to what? The most contribution is given Ernest who give this what? The separate potential whereas the Goldman Hodgkin's equation give the combined potential of all the ions that is being acting to maintain the resting membrane potential. Though it is quite simple to measure theoretically but practically it is quite difficult to measure the resting membrane potential. So what it does, it has got the two pipette, what? Two pipette. So let's say this is a knob fiber. So one has one pipette or the one electrode is placed in the extracellular fluid whereas another pipette is being given inside the fluid and the both are connected to a oscilloscope what? oscilloscope it is a voltmeter type what? voltmeter type and is contained with what? KCL that is the potassium chloride so what we can see one is placed on the one electrode is present on the uh, outside that in extracellular fluid whereas one is placed which has having the KCL is placed inside the cell and this is measured through a oscilloscope so this video is all about the resting membrane potential if this video is helpful to you then please like and for more videos tap the subscribe buttons and i always tell you this this is lecture is the topic on demand so you can just comment the topics on my youtube channels and you can also follow me on facebook as akash biology so that you can build up your concept and if there is any queries or if there is any the maze or the things that you want to improve in my video then do comment i will take it positively and for all of you don't limit your challenges just challenges your limit because you don't know you have the potency to create better to be better be a man with reckoned with make your own identity do better do hard work and you feel the good days are not behind us the good days are in front of us if we have dedications, immense leadership in us and most and most important thing you have to be very faithful to yourself and you have to have faith on yours thank you, stay tuned and connected with Akash Palos